history. There were only two kinds of people in this country, Holden drivers and everybody else. Two flaming right there was, and on TV, one man was the most fanatical Holden lover in the entire land. His name was Ted Bullpit, and he lived in Kingswood country. Not the Kingswood Mill. <laughs> Kingswood Country was set in old school suburban Australia, a place where women were sheilas. Bloody <laughs> stupid woman. And people from overseas were bloody wogs. Bloody wog chucking food around like it grows on trees. In the middle of it all was Ted Bullpit, played by Ross Higgins. I'm the king of the castle, now rack off. Ted's world revolved around reading the paper with a cold beer in his favourite chair. And one very special car. Give me your keys. The Kingswood? You're not taking the Kingswood? I just missed a sheen the roof rack. Coming second to the Kingswood was Ted's long-suffering wife, Thelma, played by Judy Farr. What were you before you were married? Oh, very happy. <laughs> the kids, Craig and Greta, took a few serves from Dad. Nothing. Especially when Greta married a valiant, driving, Italian-named Bruno. You looking for this? Give us a you deviated little dago! From 1980 to 1984, Kingswood Country became a part of Aussie culture. It even changed the way we spoke. Pick on me grandmother! Tell him to leave the money on the fridge! Oh. The Kingswood? He's not taking the Kingswood. I just glad wrapped the number plate. <laughs> Please welcome the gang from Wombat Crescent. Judy Farr. Lex Marinoff. Laurel McGowan. Peter Fisher. And Ted Bullpit himself, Ross Higgins. Pickle me grandmother. Tell us, Ted Bullpit was, he was a bit of a sexist. He was a bit of a racist. What else? He was a bit Sh of a chauvinist. chauvinist. But we loved him. Why did we love him so much, do you think? Of course, he's a very nice fella. Oh, that's <laughs> what right there. <laughs> you were one of the best voiceover artists in the country. You were oh, you Mr were Sheen, time. you were Louis the Fly. How does it feel always being remembered as Ted Bullpit? Very happy to be remembered as Ted Bullpit. Why? Oh, of course, it was a fantastically enjoyable show. You know, I love working with this lovely cast. Anything more I can say? <laughs> How gorgeous we are. Yes, you're gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Goes without saying, doesn't it? And Judy, you, you, you were the long-suffering Thelma, mm -hmm. the wife. But long-suffering. <laughs> long, I don't know how you did it, but. You did the show in front of a live audience. You did, yes. Every show. How, how hard was that to basically deliver your lines perfectly all the time? We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> how right you are. <laughs> and, and Thelma appeared a little silly sometimes, but she was no pushover, was she? No, she was not. <laughs> no. Love it. <laughs> well, she had this child this daughter who was a woman's liver from the time she was born how could Thelma possibly be stupid no, she was a very intelligent woman Peter yeah. in in Ted's words yeah. you were son Craig the the randy little animal yes now you, you I still am true to fear. <laughs> It was your first bit, big role. Yes. With a cast like this. Yes, absolutely. What was that what like? Did what did you learn? F first television role, absolutely. I learned a lot from everybody else. I certainly learned a lot from these two in terms of comic timing and comedy. So a, a, a very steep learning curve. Now, Lex, you you got the, you were the part, you were Bruno, migr migrant son-in-law. Tell us about the audition process for you. I got a call to come and see Gary and Tony about this series called Kingswood Country, and so we, you know, we sat and we had a bit of a chat, much as we're doing now, and then. They said, oh, would, would you read a bit? And I said, yeah, sure, let's do it. And, uh, and so I started to read, and I noticed that the room just chilled. You know, I just went, and I thought, oh, this, you know, something's gone wrong here. And they said, but aren't you going to do it with an accent? And I said, well, no. I mean, we've just been sitting here for 20 minutes talking. I don't have an accent. And why would he have an accent? He's born here, isn't he? And they said, well, yeah, but he's Italian. And I said, well, you know, for a start, I'm Greek, but, you know. I <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I don't mind. You know, I can nudge it a bit to be a Western Greek. Um, so, uh, so yeah, anyway, we got through it. You know. And Laurel, you were living in Leichhardt at the time in Sydney, which is kind of the little Italy of Sydney. I would imagine your neighbours were happy that, you know, Greta married Bruno. Well, I used to shamelessly use the fact that I was married to the WOG because I lived next door to a school, the Orange Grove Primary School there, and I don't know, people who live next to schools always thought a bit odd, I was that fatty old lady with the noisy dog, but if I wanted to up my cred, I always said, I'm married to Bruno, you know, and they'd oh, you're married to the WOG, and then I was in for the kids, so it was great. That is funny. Well, Bruno was always on the receiving end of Ted's taunting and teasing. Let's take a look. There's nothing wrong with me, mate. I'm Australian. Not like you bloody migrants. You're coming out here, taking our jobs, perving on our women, breathing our sunshine. Why don't you go back to your own country? Listen. For the last time, I'm an Australian. I was born here. Where? Wagga. That'd be right. <laughs> To Ted, didn't he? You became quite a role model. Well, uh, unintentionally, if that's the case, but uh, that was enjoyable. It was good to do. And I was born in Wagga, too, so <laughs> that's a reasonable thing to say. Yeah. Uh, Ross, did you, you enjoy those scenes? You must have had a lot of laughs. I loved it. The, the, the problem is Lex is a terrible giggler, and trying to be cranky with him all the time is very difficult to do. <laughs> Laurel, did this phobia that Ross had for germs and things like that, oh. did you all... Used to play up to it and oh, tricks. He was so sympathetic. Oh. Every schoolboy <laughs> prank we could think of, we played on him. No mass coughing when he walked in the room as if we all had the flu exactly at the same time. <laughs> the other thing was there was no, no such thing as political correctness, was there? Oh. Oh. Was anyone oh. ever offended? I don't think you'd no. think they were, you know. No. I really don't. A nun rang up once, was a bit offended with me, <laughs> apart from that. Why? Yeah. Do you reckon you could get away with it today? No. Probably no. not. No. Not, no, I don't think no. so. It's Too hard many to say. lobby groups calling in. Yes, you days. do. Yes, 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 you can't do anything but, now. Yeah, then it was. Say good um, morning and you're dead. What do you mean, brother? Thank you, Ted. <laughs> well, what many people may not know is that Kingswood Country was actually born from a sketch on one of Australia's groundbreaking comedy shows, The Naked Vicar Show. Let's take a look at how the original Bullpit family appeared on the Naked Vicar show back in 1977. Hell, Ma! No, fix your own breakfast. Where were we, Damien? Oh, yes. There, with a staple on you. Oh, all right, hell, Ma, I'll fix my own breakfast. Where's the blender? The Kenwood? You're not taking the Kenwood! <laughs> I just Ajax the blaze! <laughs> Morning, Ma. Morning, Dad. Mm. Breakfast ready, Mum? You'd be bloody lucky, boy. Your mum's discovered liberation. What? Uh, the boof that plays a piano? <laughs> <laughs> well, please welcome Ross's co-stars from the Naked Vicar Show, Nolene Brown and Kevin Goldsby. <laughs> That you, you didn't pay Craig in the series. <laughs> Disappointed. Oh, and it went on. Yeah, obviously Disappointed. not. You are enjoyed the I was devastated. <laughs> I desperately wanted to be Ted's son in the show. <laughs> you see, Ross kindly explained to me. He said, Kev, Kev, he said, he always calls me Kev. And he said, Because that's his name. <laughs> that's right. He said, It's not that you're too old to be my son. But I'm too young to be your father. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still hurting. Nolene, did you want to play Thelma, though? <laughs> Look, I'd just got married to one of the writers, Tony Sattler. So I wanted to have a bit of time on my own, really, and not work with him again. Because I thought it would be the end of our marriage. You know, he'd say, uh, why don't you say my words better? And I'd say, why don't you write better words? <laughs> 
And we heard earlier about Ross's germ phobia. In the Naked Vicar show, we did a sketch where you played the leader of the country party, Doug, uh, Doug Anthony, oh, yes. and you had to speak to one of your constituents who was a sheep. That's right. And you said, I'm not, I'm not going to work with a sheep because, it, you know, it might have germs. And Tony said, no, this is a CSIRO sheep. They don't have any germs. So he's going, hello, hello, constituents, to this sheep. And the sheep, they're looking very seriously at each other. Then the sheep goes, <laughs> and this green sheep <laughs> went all over and he finished the sketch and he ran into the dressing room as you can imagine to get all of this green gunk off his kids were in the audience they're roaring with laughter because when they were kids they weren't allowed to blow the candles on their cakes out they had to wave them out with a napkin oh no <laughs> True, true. <laughs> apart, from, apart from Ross's aversion to germs, he also admitted, and still does, that he doesn't really like to be touched. And all of the cast laughed when Cole McEwen, lovely Cole, uh, made his wonderful entrances. Yeah, he made his entrances where he would creep through a door. <laughs> Starting to get nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, please say Nolene Brown, Kevin Goldsby, and the cast of Kingswood Country. <laughs>